against NJIT. So it looks like Camden Gianni is ready. The Highlanders are ready. And let's do it here in the Valley. Game number two of this two game set between the Lopes and NJIT. And we'll start it off with none other than a service error, the same way we ended it last night with GCU picking up the victory after NJIT's final service error to end that win for the Lopes. So with NJIT up by one, it'll be Fiesler back. Fiesler doing a nice job defensively for NJIT here last night. Came away with two kills of his own offensively as well. Gianni puts it up, slams it down, but it's gonna be out of play, and NJIT off, up, off to a two nothing set lead here in set number one. Wiesler with over 28 assists a night ago. Is that one barely getting over the net? We mentioned the service errors really being the Achilles heel last night for NJIT, but they're off to a hot start here in the first set on this Saturday. It's 3-0. Great start here for the Highlanders. This is what they needed to do, jump out to an early lead and try not to look back. So the Lopes. Looking to bounce back here early on. They don't want to create too much separation between themselves and the Highlanders. We'll see if the Highlanders can keep that one in the air. Nice play defensively to keep this rally going. Gianni. Setting up slight, and the lips are on the board. Rico Wardlow not holding anything back. Had himself a nice night last night as well. Picking up seven kills of his own. Now he has one here on this Saturday. Lucas back to serve for the Lopes. We'll see if NJIT can respond here. And they do, a wide open court. As it looks like Josh Gregg, who picked up eight kills a night ago, is on the board. It's now 4-1 NJIT. Really nothing you could do there if you're the Lopes defense. Going with the double coverage right in front of the net. A wide open back court for Gregg as he comes away with his first kill. So now, Antonio Feliciano, you see there number 10 back to serve for NJIT as he sends it over the net. Lopes looking to cut that lead in half. Hickman, the player of the game last night, is gonna come away. What looked like a potential kill. Nice job by NJIT to keep that one in the air defensively. Going for the soft touch there was Wardlow. And the Lopes cut the lead in half, it's 4-2. See there? Alessandro Negri, unable to deflect that one. So Wardlow gets the point. He'll be back to serve now for the Lopes. And the Lopes offense got off to an extremely slow start in set number one yesterday as they now trail by three, five to two. NJIT, despite six service errors in that first set, came away with an eight point victory before the Lopes offense really turned it around a complete 180 in that second set to tie things up with a 25-17 win of their own. Came away with a 25-18 win in set number three before finishing things off in set number four, 25-16. And the Lopes pick up a point right there. Jackson Hickman, 13 kills last night, picks up his first of the day. So now it'll be Nicholas Slight for the Lopes back to serve. Slight with a few assists last night as NJIT coming out of the gate strong again. Cutting that lead in half once again at 6-3. Take another look. Really nothing you could do there if you're slight. Christian Trevino making his first appearance this weekend as he's back to serve. Coming in hot there for the Lopes as Gianni just couldn't time that one up perfectly. And NJIT now has a commanding four point lead at 7 3. Yeah, Looked rare. like that just. He didn't time it up quite right. No, rare miscommunication there for the Lopes. Camden jumps high, but not too high. <laughs> Slight setting up Camden once again, looking to find the court. Nice defensive stop right there for NJIT. And once again, Hickman trying to get on the board. And he will. Nice job by number 16, Jackson Hickman. We'll take another look as that one was off the hands of Negri once again. And the Lopes cut into that lead at 7-4 now. Still plenty of volleyball left to be played in this first set as Hickman's unable 
to defend that one. Griffin Fiesler's on the board with his first kill. It's 8-4. Negri will be back to serve. Alessandro leading the charge with Feliciano last night. We mentioned those 11 kills. Gianni not holding anything back, but it's out of play, and NJIT gets the point. So a five-point cushion now for NJIT as it's looking very similar to what we saw in set number one yesterday, Tyler, with NJIT coming out of the gate strong with the Lopes offense really not connecting. Absolutely. And it almost looked like Camden Gianni's back was turned right there as Feliciano comes away with the kill. Take another look. It looks like it was slight with his back turned to the net. As Thorne sends it over the net, and once again, NJIT not letting the Lopes build any momentum early on. Lead back up to six, it's 11 to five. Doing an excellent job negating any future momentum that the Lopes have been able to build early on in this set. We saw it almost verbatim here last night as the second service error is dished out for NJIT. Can he afford those early on in this game, Tyler? No, you can't. And if you're a Highlander fan, that is not a sight you want to see. Feliciano with the deflection still getting the point. Very impressive there as NJIT now out to a 12-6 lead. We'll see if they can build off of this. We'll take another look. Not every day you see this deflected off of Slight. Back deflected off Feliciano and the deflection finds the court for the point. NJIT entered this weekend just one in five, currently one in six now on the road here in 2024. As Hickman with all of his might sending that one over for the kill, but deflected by NJIT, but the Lopes are able to pick up the point as that one lands out of play and the lead is cut to five, it's 12-7. Jordan Lucas back to serve, sends it over the net. We'll see if NJIT can continue to deflect momentum for the Lopes as they try to keep it in the air. Gianni pops that one up for slight, sends it over with the soft touch. And Fiesler unable to communicate there with it looked like Andrew Fedmasu as the ball touches the court. And the Lopes now cut the lead to four. It's 12-8 NJIT. Both men went up, neither came down with the ball. As Fiesler once again setting up Feliciano. And NJIT is going to come away with the point after the violation from the Lopes defense. It's 13 8. Mentioned NJIT coming into this one now. 1 in 6 overall on the road. Six of their eight wins coming in New Jersey in their hometown in Newark. Hickman with the deflection is going to come away with the kill. It's 13-9 as Jackson Hickman coming out of the gate strong for Coach Worley in the Lopes. As many as three defenders right there for Jackson Hickman. Got it past both Feliciano Williams and Fedmasu. Wardlow back to serve for the Lopes. Sends it over the net. NJIT with the deflection. Really nothing you can do there if you're Lucas, but... A last minute wave, keeping that one alive, deflected again, sent over the net, and it's out of play. What a point for the Lopes. Very impressive rally back and forth. That's the kind of rally that really gets the fans excited here in this arena. I'll take another look. Nice job there by Lucas, as that one was heading out of play. Wow, that was a heck of an acrobatic play there by Lucas. It's like he bent his back all the way back to avoid that ball. That was outstanding. Not something everybody could do, Tyler. No, not at all. I certainly couldn't. That one's deflected out of play, and NJIT will come away with the kill. So they're now up by four, 14 to 10, as we enter the middle stages of set number one. NJIT looking to come away with the series split against the Lopes after dropping last night's three to one matchup. Already three service errors for NJIT in this one as that one's not going to be deflected by Nagri. Camden Gianni coming away with the kill. It's 14 to 11. Go, 
Griffin Fiesler almost looked like he was going for the one-handed defense there, unable to come away with it. Fiesler now setting up Negri, who finds the backcourt for the kill, and it's 15 to 11. So Josh Gregg will now be back to serve. Looked like Fiesler setting up Gregg there. So Gregg not Negri there for the kill. He picks up his second kill of this set. Back to serve, sends it over the net. Really holding nothing back there. Hickman holding nothing back. What goes up must come down. Another kill for number 16 for the purple and white. It's 15-12. Hick Hickman set up beautifully right there. Coming off a huge game last night with 13 kills in yesterday's matchup. These are continuing to set up his offense. We'll pick up another assist there. Feliciano comes away with the kill as NJIT continues to creep closer to a set number one victory, just like they did here last night in the desert. We'll take another look. Fiesler setting up Feliciano. Slight unable to come away with it. You see the disappointment on his face. But the Lopes still in this one, still in the middle stages of this set, only down by four. Hickman setting up Gianni, looking to find the court, deflected by NJIT's defense. They keep it in the air. Feliciano looking for the kill. It's deflected by Gianni. And Gianni comes away with the block. It's 16-13. We saw Cameron Thorne coming into the back end to help out his veteran star as Gianni and Thorne leading the Lopes for their 13th point. Thorne back to serve for the Lopes. Feliciano looking to find the court. Nice diving stop there by Hickman. Once again, Feliciano set up there by Fiesler. Hickman gonna set up Gianni, who's gonna find the backcourt for the kill, and the Lopes are creeping closer, Tyler. It's 16-14. They need to build off that. That was a great pass there from Hickman and a beautiful setup for Gianni, who is top three in the conference with kills per set with 3.6. So Gianni now has two kills. Jackson Hickman still leading the charge with four kills on seven attempts. GCU with a service error of their own giving NJIT their 17th point of the set. Now a 17-14 lead. Andrew Fedmasu with two kills in his first two attempts will be back to serve for the red and white. As that one's gonna be deflected by Hickman. Will it stay in play? Yes, it will. Nice job there by Thornton to keep it in play. Fiesler looking for the quick touch. It's deflected by the Lopes defense. Still looking to find the court. Will they find it? Yes, they will. NJIT coming away with a hard fought point, making it an 18 14 lead. Nice job there by the Lopes defense, but we'll take another look. Just unable to keep this one in play after a few deflections as Thornton continuing to dive all over the court. We saw him with a few acrobatic dives last night defensively for the Lopes. And a very rare service ace for NJIT as they now lead it by as many as five. It's 19 14. As we'll have a timeout on the floor. Number fourth in the nation. They were number one last weekend going into that matchup in that outrigger tournament in Honolulu, Hawaii, before the then number three Hawaii swept the Lopes to take over that number one position after the Lopes went one and two on the weekend. A 3-2 loss to UC Irvine, a 3-0 sweep against Hawaii, and then a 3-2 victory after falling behind 2-0 against Lewis University. Not holding anything back right there was NJIT, able to find the back corner. And it's 20-14, so they're five points away now from coming away with another set number one victory, just like they did last night. Deflected by Thornton. Slight sets up Hickman. Hickman gonna set up Lucas. Just gets it over the net. The Lopes looking for the soft touch. They're gonna find it in the form of Rico Wardlow, who comes away with the point, and it's 20 to 15. And a nice deflection there by NJIT with the two on one coverage, but Rico Wardlow able to find the court just in front of the net. So now the Lopes with an opportunity down by five. They're gonna have to go on a run here late in this set. And JIT looking to stunt the momentum once again. Thornton, another great dive to keep that one alive. Hickman looking for the kill. It's deflected by NJIT. They keep it in the air. Nice rally from both squads as it's going to find the court. Nice attempt there from Matthew Thornton. But Josh Craig picks up his fourth kill on NJIT. Now has a six point lead. It's 21 15. We'll take another look. Went with the soft touch with the three on one coverage. 
So Greg will be back to serve. NJIT now four points away from coming away with the set victory. Hickman sets up slight, slight setting up Wardlow. Nice defense from NJIT to keep it in the air once again. Feliciano looking to find the court. Three on one coverage coming from the Lopes. Hickman sends it over. A little too much oomph on that one as it's going to go out of play. And NJIT out to a commanding now seven point lead. It's 22 15. You see there on the replay, Gianni setting up Jackson Hickman beautifully there, looking for another kill already, leading the loops today like we mentioned multiple times. But just a little too much energy on that potential kill as a service error stings NJIT once more. Still have a big enough cushion though, up by six, it's 22-16, and as Jordan Lucas back to serve for the loops. And a good sign for the Highlanders, that was only their third service error of this set, so nothing terrible. Limiting like the said, damage compared to last night. Of course, and like you said, comfortable now five point lead. We go Wardlow with the block. There's the Lopes still in it, but three points away from suffering their second consecutive set number one loss to the New Jersey Institute of, Te of Technology. Lucas sends it over. Highlanders have done a nice job responding to a Lopes point, and they do just that here with another kill. It's 23-17. So NJIT creeps closer as Feliciano will be back to serve after the kill right there from Carson Williams. Now has three in his first three attempts. Carson Williams picked up the first two kills in last night's matchup for NJIT in the first set. As NJIT, just like they did last night, doing a nice job spreading the ball around offensively. They've got three heavy hitters as another service error is going to bite them late in this set. As the Lopes pick up their 18th point, it's 23-18. But now, if you're Coach Worley's squad, you kind of have to go on a run here late. Yep. And we'll see if they're able to do that as... Looks like Jared Anderson going to be back to serve. And a service error dished out by the Lopes. And it'll be set point here for NJIT. So with the match point, Carson Williams with three kills already is going to look to end this set for NJIT. Lopes looking to stay alive. Hickman finds the backcourt just in the nick of the line, and it's 24-19. Perfect ball placement there from Hickman. Found the open side of the backcourt, and now they need to go on a 5-0 run at least. Slight sends it over. NJIT looking for the win, and it looks like they're going to find it. Just on the inside part of the line, it looks like that was Alessandro Negri with his second kill, putting the nail on the coffin in set number one. So NJIT comes out with a 25-19 win here in set number one. We'll move to set number two. We'll see if we steal a little deja vu from last night. If the Lopes are able to bounce the Lopes backs against the wall here. They only have one victory on the road here in 2024. One and six with six of those eight wins coming at home in Newark. Josh Gregg leading the charge for NJIT with four kills. Carson Williams with that final kill. He has four as well. So both Gregg and Williams leading the charge. Jackson Hickman leading the charge for the Lopes with five kills in his first 10 attempts. So it'll be Josh Craig back to serve for NJIT as we are all set to go here in this second set. Lopes keeping it alive. Wardlow coming in for the kill and the Lopes lead it by one. Camden Gianni back to serve for the Lopes. And he's going to come away with a service ace, and the Lopes lead it by two. It's 2-0. Two so Gianni will be back to serve. A 2-0 lead for the Lopes, looking to get off to a sizable margin as there are back-to-back Service ace is dished out to Camden Gianni, and it's three nothing Lopes. Gotta like what you see so far early on in this set as that one was deflected by Negri. And as we continue the action here 
in set number two. I'll turn the play-by-play -play duties over to Mr. Tyler Hartman. Take it away, Tyler. Thanks, Jack. Gianni gets over the net, defended well to Hickman. Sets up slight looking, and Hickman with a beautiful kill. And Jackson Hickman continues to look strong for Coach Worley. Take another look there, set up beautifully by Rico Wardlow, finding the back corner for the kill. And just like yesterday, Tyler, the Lopes out to a 4-0 advantage in set number two after falling behind to NJIT early. Absolutely. Highlanders looking to answer, and they do. Went right off Hickman's face. That had to hurt. I would love to see a replay of what we just saw. Me Jackson too. Hickman, take another look. Deflecting that one right off of his, it looked like his left peck, yeah. right in front of his lower chin there. As NJIT now on the board. Vicious kill for Feliciano as he's set to serve here. Four to one, early lead for GCU. It's over the net, dug by Hickman. Slight sets up Wardlow. Not much you can do there if you're a Highlander defender. Wardlow, one of the more premier offensive attackers on this team, and see the replay set up beautifully and found the perfect spot in the court. The more and more we watch this team, Tyler, the more and more weapons that are exposed by Coach Worley's offense. Right there, great kill for Alessandro Negri. Cuts the lead to three for the Highlanders. Carson Williams set to serve for the Highlanders. Bit of discussion from the refs. Not sure what's going on. It looks like a few substitutions are gonna be made by both sides as well with the referees switching out the volleyballs, it seems like. I think Jordan Lucas might have gotten some blood in his hand. It looks like he's getting checked out by the bench by one of the trainers, if we could get a shot of that. As we mentioned, 5-2 lead for the Lopes early in the second set. Williams over the net and in. A service ace for the Highlanders from Carson Williams. And like we saw in the first set, they thought it was out, but just got it on the line. Hey, you really couldn't place that any more perfectly if you're Carson Williams. And we've seen a lot of service errors thus far for NJIT. If they're able to perfect what we just saw, could be a long, long night for the Lopes. And Camden Gianni with a heat-seeking missile of a kill. The best defender in the world could have stopped that. Heat seeking missile. I like that, Tyler. <laughs> really, really you, nothing you could do right there if you're Antonio Feliciano, though. That was a rocket. Yeah. Wardlow set to serve. Gets it over the net. Soft touch. Done nicely. And sets up Greg. Josh Greg with the kill. Silences the crowd a little bit here in Global Credit Union Arena. It's very interesting. We didn't see much of Josh Gregg in the first two sets last night, Tyler, but then came out of the gate strong in set number three. Really was an X factor in those final two sets for NJIT and is now leading the charge so far here tonight in the first two sets. Yeah, he's been playing nicely besides that service error right there, but he's been a nice production for the offense as Slight set to serve. Blocked right at the net. Gianni and Cameron Thorne right at the net. It's gonna be hard to get over those two amazing blockers as Cameron Thorne leads the league in blocks per set. Slight gets it over nicely. It's blocked again. Dug nicely, Greg. Blocked again and it's in. Back to back blocks for the Lopes. A little block party starting here for the Lopes. And there was a wide open hole there, as you'll see on the replay. That one didn't even look like Camden Gianni was trying to deflect it to the left side of the court, but he does. And there was a wide open hole with all those NJIT defenders on the right side. It looks like there is a net violation on GCU, so the point will go to the Highlanders.
Alessandro set to serve. Dug nicely by Hickman. Slight all the way to Gianni. Defended well. Sets up Greg, blocked, and it will be a Highlander point there. Great play from Greg. Excuse me, not Greg, Feliciano. So then JIT able to jump out to a strong set number one victory. We saw the Lopes jump out to a very sizable lead in set number two last night. Not really looking the same despite playing much better offensively early on in this set. NJIT still give them a run for their money. And Slight with the easy pass to Thorne. And that is automatic when he has that wide open up space with for Thorne. And Cameron Thorne getting on the board with the kill. Take another look here. Not holding anything back was number eight. Hickman gets it over the net, sets up and blocked at the net. Jordan Lucas looks like he got it there on that block. And now GCU 11 to six. Looks like there is a timeout from NJIT. Grand Canyon University Antelope with a five point lead early in set two. And Jack, what are you liking from the Lope so far? I'm liking that they completely flipped the script from what we saw from set number one. They did it last night, they're doing it so far here in set number two. Came out to a sizable lead, we're up by as many as four early on. Now lead it by five, 11 to six. Looking to knot up the score at one apiece going into set number three. Absolutely, looks like there is a net violation once again on the Lopes, so that's gonna be a point for the Highlanders. Lopes did a decent job offensively staying alive in that first set before NJIT was able to close the door. Now the Highlanders doing a solid job staying afloat here in set number two. It's still a lot of volleyball left to be played, but they're doing a nice job balancing out the scoreboard. Absolutely, it looks like Cameron Thorne will get the kill on that. Five point lead for the Lopes early in set number two. Thorne set to serve, and it is going to be a service error for the Lopes. Rare from Thorne. Keeping the Highlanders in it so far, only a four point deficit for them. You know, the service error has really seemed like it's been the momentum killer for both the Lopes and the Highlanders Absolutely. all weekend long. And you would think you practice that every day, getting it over the net simply, but clearly not as Griffin Fiesler is set to serve. And Jordan Lucas, nice effort there, but couldn't get to it in time, and that would be a service ace for Fiesler. And that is a service mm. error for the Highlanders, which has been their Achilles heel these past couple of games. 13-9 GCU, Kim and Gianni set to serve for the Lopes. Three kills on the day. And that is a service error for the Lopes. So a point to the Highlanders and it's 13-10. And these service errors for both teams, Jack, are keeping them in the game. Neither offense really able to build momentum because of that ultimate momentum killer with the service errors. Yep. NJIT more so than the Lopes, but the Lopes not really doing a great job early on in this second set, really separating themselves from NJIT. Slight to Wardlow, and he scores. Right off the arm of Fiesler, couldn't do much about it. And the Lopes now extends their lead to four. Wardlow, just when you forgot about him, coming out of nowhere, finding the court for the Lopes. Lucas set to serve, gets it over the net, defended nicely, Fiesler, right to Williams. Wow, that's a powerful kill right there. Fiesler set to serve for the Highlanders, down three in set number two. Over the net to Hickman, slight to Wardlow. Oh, defended nicely, what a play. Thornton back to Slight, Wardlow again, and it's still alive. And it looks like a net violation, so the Lopes will get the point for that one. 
Wardlow missed it the first time, but when he gets that second opportunity, he's not going to miss again. Lead to four for the Lopes. Wardlow set to serve. Leading the day for the Lopes with seven kills. He gets it over the net. And Greg with the kill. Feaster with a beautiful pass there. The Highlanders slowly staying in it. Definitely in fighting range as the lead is now down to three for the Lopes. Yeah, the Lopes defense is going to have to maintain Josh Gregg. Six kills, only nine attempts as he has that 333 hitting percentage. But look, look at that. When you hear those trumpets, you know what's coming with the service error. Yeah, and it's almost like we're congratulating them and then the next minute we jinx the announcer jinx. Slight set to serve, gets over the net. And Fiesler can't get it. Back to Thornton. Thornton setting up Hickman. Defended nicely. And that was hit way too hard by Alessandro. Attacking error for the Highlanders and the Lopes now puts the lead back to five. So the replay just put a little too oomph from it. And the lead is now five for the Lopes. A slight set to serve. Just gets it over the net. And a beautiful pass from Fiesler to Fed Masu for the kill. 17-13 now in set number two for the Lopes. And he talked about keeping your foot on the gas earlier on, Tyler, as the Lopes are gonna have to do that right here, right now, if they don't want NJIT to start creeping back closer into the set already up by one. Absolutely, and Jordan Lucas with an absolute rocket of a kill. And he celebrates with a little bit of sass. Gotta love it if you're a Lopes fan. And there's that special ingredient we were talking about. The Lopes gonna have to stunt all the momentum. They wanna come away with a hard fought set number two victory. Jordan Lucas leading the charge right there. Fiesler to Feliciano with the kill. And when you see the Lopes get a little bit of momentum, they either shoot themselves in the foot or the Highlanders respond quickly. Yeah, I can honestly say between these two squads all weekend long, Tyler, I don't think we've seen one team really run away with one set until the very end. Absolutely. It's been neck and neck all set long as Thorn with a powerful kill almost runs over Jordan Lucas after the celebration. Yeah, take another look here. Perfectly sets up. Cameron Thorn was slight, and Jordan Lucas kind of having a rough second set so yeah. far here in Phoenix, but he's okay. Thorne set to serve, gets it over. Fiesler all the way to Greg, and they are going to get the point. Lead now 19 to 15 for the Lopes. See the replay here. Greg off Lucas, out of bounds. Highlander staying in it here. Fiesler set to serve. Nice dig by. Hickman, but it's going to be out of bounds. So a service ace for Fiesler. And the lead is now cut to three as the Highlanders are chipping away slowly. Hickman digs it out. Wardlow with a nice tap, defended nicely. Back to Greg, and he scores. And like we said, we didn't see Greg early in the first couple of sets last game, but he's been a nice offensive addition to this team. It's almost interesting to kind of discuss hypothetically what could have happened in each of those first two sets last night. Absolutely. If Josh Craig made his presence felt. And another service ace for Fiesler, and just like that, the lead is cut to one. And you can see the momentum swing has swung all the way to New Jersey side. And the stadium is absolutely silent. You can hear a pin drop right now. Fiesler with a high serve, and as we were just hyping them up, another service error for the Highlanders. And when you look back at this set, Tyler, that may have been the most pivotal 
service error to date for NJIT. Mounting a bit of a comeback here to cut the lead to one for GCU and now giving the Lopes an opportunity to really add to their momentum. Absolutely, and they could have potentially tied it and now they're down two as one of the best servers in the country. And Kamajiani as he digs it out, gets it to Thornton. Lucas with a nice kill opportunity, didn't get it. Thornton with a diving dig, love that. Wardlow with a nice tip, couldn't get it. Sets up, and they score. Feliciano with another kill on the day, his seventh, excuse me, his eighth. Yeah, the double coverage coming right there from Wardlow and Lucas on the purple and white side, but NJIT with another opportunity to nod things up here at 20. We'll see if they're able to give themselves a chance. We saw the service error moments ago. It's really been the thorn in their side throughout both of these games this weekend with Feliciano looking to be back to serve. It looks like we're going to see a timeout on the court, though, from NJIT. And like we just said, they're going to award the Highlanders with the point. And now back within one, let's see if they can build off from that and potentially tie up this next set. And not that it's mattered to this point, Tyler, but we'll see if that quick timeout and that quick review time stunts any momentum NJIT is able to build. Like I said, neither team has really been able to run away with it in each of the first six sets that we've seen all weekend long. But NJIT trying to mount a comeback after being down by as many as six. Feliciano barely gets it over. Hickman sets up Gianni, blocked at the net. Thornton, slight. Gianni! Beautiful dig, still alive. Feliciano gets it over the net. Thornton back to slight to Wardlow, and they score. Wardlow with a vicious kill for the Lopes. We thought Camden Gianni had it on that first time around. NJIT doing a nice job with the block, but really nothing you could do right there if you're Ron Tidhar as Wardlow picks up the kill. Lucas gets it over the net. Fiesler to Williams, and that is out of bounds. Another point for the Lopes, and the Lopes just three points away now from getting set two. Lucas again with a nice serve. Dug out nicely. Fiesler to Williams, and they'll get the kill on that. Got to love the effort from Thornton, but not much he could do there. Yeah, Thornton has been a great defender for the Lopes all weekend long, all season long, really. Just was unable to tip that one in the right side direction as it goes out of play. Williams set to serve for the Highlanders. Over the net to Hickman. Slight back to Hickman, blocked! Denied at the net. Number four, Josh Gregg. All right, this is a pivotal moment, Tyler, because NJIT has been down by as many as one in the final few minutes of this second set, we're entering the final stages of this set with a golden opportunity to come away with a 2-0 lead going into set number three. We'll see if they're able to stay alive here and limit the service errors. Blocked again, but out of bounds, so that will be a Lopes point. 23-21 now, just two points away. Jackson Hurst set to check in for Rico Wardlow. Jackson Hurst, sophomore for the Lopes. Hasn't gotten a bunch of playing time, but let's see if he can make this point made here. Blocked at the net, but out of bounds. Nice play there by number 16, Neg Alessandro. And again, within one point, but they haven't been able to get over that hump. They haven't been able to tie it. Let's see if they can do it here. Upcoming with Greg's serve. And out of bounds, and oh, that is such a killer to have a service error right there. And now the Lopes is just one point away from taking set number two. Blocked at the net, Cameron Thorne says no, as he has been a thorn in the side of the Highlanders all set long. Lopes takes set number two, 25. So it looks like both sides are ready as we kickstart 
Set number three, Camden Gianni back to serve for the Lopes as they'll look to add to their momentum. Had two service aces in that set. Nice job there by Jordan Lucas able to keep it alive as it's deflected by NJIT and they're out to a quick one nothing lead. After GCU got off to a red hot start in the second set, NJIT looking to take back control. We'll take another look there. Missed the dive right there from Jordan Lucas doing a nice job after getting cut up earlier in the second set. NJIT back to serve, Fiesler, who's been a player to watch thus far here in the first six sets all weekend long, as that one's gonna be deflected by Fiesler, stays in the air, Feliciano sends it over, Gianni there waiting for him. Hickman finds the court, and we're all knotted up at one as Jackson Hickman comes away with another kill, his eighth kill on 15 attempts, as the Lopes will look to take their first lead of this set, take another look. Slight setting up number 16, Jackson Hickman well right there as it's sent over the net by Lucas. NJIT looking to take the lead back quickly here. Feliciano unable to keep it in play and the Lopes take a 2-1 lead. See him trying to find that back corner on the left side. Just a little too much energy on that potential kill. Fiesler. Setting up Greg, deflected by Wardlow, doing a nice job right there for the Lopes defense. Because that one's gonna find the back corner, and they're gonna reward the point to the Lopes as it's knocked out a bit out of bounds. It'll look like NJIT celebrating a little bit too early on that one. We'll take another look. Greg looking for that Looks like line on the left the side. Challenge card as well. Yeah, that one was a too close to call type of play. So we're gonna go to the review board once again. We've seen a few close plays early on in this in these first few sets. But the Lopes would love for this one to go in their favor to jump out to a sizable lead and then continue to roll that momentum. I've been saying all day long, we've been using that word. It's almost like a cliche, kind of like a crutch word at this point for us, Tyler. Absolutely. But neither team really has been able to build momentum early on in this game. No, they haven't. And if you look at the replay again, not sure if it was tipped. And usually as a fan, I saw the, the players on the Highlander side immediately begging their coach to pull the challenge card. So you're looking for two things right here, Tyler. You're looking to see if it was tipped by slight. You see their number seven for the purple and white. And you're also seeing if it hit the line. If you're looking at it from the line perspective, it did look like it was out of bounds. See there Camden Gianni waiting at the last moment. Did Gianni get a touch on it as well? You see there, it didn't look like Slight touched it. Yeah, it looked like it cleared Slight. I think now the question is if they either hit Gianni. I don't Gianni. think Slight, did it hit Gianni? Let's see. I don't know. Don't think so, I think it's too close. It I think did it, low key look like it hit the line I right think, there. I think, I think. They did confirm that it is a point for okay. the Lopes. So it was out of play. Didn't seem to touch either Slight or Gianni late in that potential kill from Feliciano. And with a bang bang play like that, it's kind of hard to reverse the call on the court if you don't have indisputable evidence. Gianni setting up Jackson Hickman, who comes away with his ninth kill. He now leads the pack, and it's four to one. So Hickman now with nine kills on 16 total attempts, has one block defensively as well. So you gotta like what you're seeing if you're coach Matt Worley. NJIT comes away with the kill, it's four to two. Feliciano was set up nicely here, take another look. Right in front of Jordan Lucas, does the splits right there, unable to come away with the ball. So a four two lead now for the Lopes. You see Antonio Feliciano back to serve eight kills, 18 attempts for the veteran. Lucas setting up Hickman, who's gonna toss it over and he's gonna come away with the kill. So he goes with the hard hit kill on the last serve. Set up nicely there by Jordan Lucas as we'll take another look. Goes with the soft touch over the net with two on one coverage as that one was deflected off of Josh Gregg. That was a very smart play there from Hickman. Wardlow back to serve, NJIT doing a nice job keeping that one in play, but it's blocked out of play, and NJIT will get the point, it's 5-3. So 
So both teams matching up evenly thus far through the first two sets, evenly through the first three sets of the first few minutes of set number three, I should say, with the Lopes jumping out to the early advantage. Gianni putting a little bit too much on that one as it goes out of play. NJIT now out. Or NJIT now with the deficit by one, 5-4 lead for the Lopes. Antonio Feliciano, we mentioned those nine kills, notched a match best 15 kills last weekend against number 17, George Mason, before drop, dropping that one three to one. Again, they were able to jump out to a quick one nothing lead after the first set win against George Mason on the road last weekend before dropping the next three, exactly what they did here last night after a 25-17 win in set number one. And it looks like Oops. we're gonna get a quick quick wipe of the floor. You think that was from Jordan Lucas's wrist? It might have been because they're asking the players to check themselves for blood. Not sure if it was Lucas or maybe another player. Well, Lucas got taped up pretty well on that left wrist in the second set after a sizable timeout to get that situated. Gonna be an interesting thing to keep tabs on as Lucas unable to keep that one in bounds and we're all knotted up at five apiece. So a 3-0 run here for NJIT. We'll take another look at the service ace as that one was deflected off the hands of Jackson Hickman. Lucas just right out of room there. Couldn't quite get to it. Tipped with the soft touch to give the Lopes a 6-5 lead. Take another look at that one as the Lopes regain control here early on. Nice little tap there from Thorne, found the open court. No, no, no man's land, excuse me. And NJIT gonna knot things up at six with a vicious kill right there from Josh Gregg, his ninth. And we're all knotted up. Two on one coverage coming from Thorne and Hickman there to no avail. So with Greg back to serve, sends it over the net. NJIT looking for the quick kill to go up by one. Hickman gets blocked and NJIT has that lead at 7-6. So Hickman going for the kill with two on one coverage. You take another look there, set up perfectly. It was three on one coverage, excuse me, with NJIT coming away with the block. So now they'll look for the two-point advantage here, trying to build any momentum that they can early on in this set. Lopes doing a nice job keeping it alive, but it's gonna go out of play, and NJIT has another 3-0 run. Back-to-back 3-0 -back runs for NJIT, and they have an 8-6 lead. Greg sends it over, Thornton. To Slight, Slight setting up Hickman, it's blocked again. Hickman able to keep it in the air. Thornton gonna set up Gianni, going for the soft touch, but NJIT's defense keeping it alive again, and we got a nice rally on our hands, but the block coming from Hickman, and the Lopes creep closer, it's 8-7. Probably the best rally we've seen here in set number three to this point, as the two-on-one block coming from both Gianni and Thorn makes this a one-score game. Blocked right there from NJIT. Slight to Hickman. Hickman looking for the kill, it's blocked. Back in the air, Thornton to Slight. Gonna set up Gianni, who's gonna come away with the point. And we're all knotted up at eight apiece. So the number four ranked team in the nation coming out striking as we see their veteran star Camden Gianni finding the backcourt there for the eighth point. This great ball placement there from Gianni. Service error dished out by GCU. As neither side really being able to break open. So far in this game, the Lopes jumped out to a sizable seven point lead in the second set before NJIT cut the lead to as many as one, with the Lopes winning the set by as many as three. The Lopes are gonna come away with the point there as NJIT unable to keep it in bounds, so we're all knotted up at nine apiece. Still very early on in this set number three, between the Lopes and the Highlanders. The New Jersey Institute of Technology looking to come away with a series split at the very least before they head back home to Newark next weekend. 
as they're gonna come away with the kill and the lead. It's 10-9 NJIT. Josh Gregg still leading the charge with nine kills, 15 attempts. Antonio Feliciano, eight kills of his own with Carson Williams and Alessandro Negri looming as well with 12 combined kills. Jackson Hickman still leading the charge for the Lopes with 10 kills on 20 attempts. Looking for another one right here and he's gonna find it. What goes up must come down. Number 16 continues to surge here for the Lopes offense. It'll be Gianni back to serve as you get a good look there at Jackson Hickman now with 11 kills. Just one assist for number 16 and the soft hands right there from NJIT gives them the lead back, it's 11 to 10. As we'll take another look, we saw this last night as well, Tyler. Just the quick hit there from Fiesler. He now has three kills. Yeah, that was a smart, that was a smart play there by Fiesler. Just a little touch. Got the Lopes on their heels there. And another kill coming from Antonio Feliciano. He's got double digits for New Jersey. It's a 10 kill performance thus far for Antonio Feliciano. And NJIT has a two point lead, it's 12-10. He's been their absolute offensive star for the Highlanders, just an outstanding attacker. That one just barely gets over the net, avoiding a service error. Jackson Hickman is gonna come away with the kill. Really nothing holding back right there for number 16 and it's 12-11. Speaking of outstanding attackers right there, Jackson Hickman, powerful dig. And JIT blocked by the combination. It looked like Slight and Wardlow teaming up there for the Lopes and we're all knotted up at 12 once again as both teams go back and forth. A seesaw affair with neither team really being able to build any momentum. And JIT setting themselves up nicely, but it's blocked as Jackson Hickman's gonna come away with his second block and Lopes jump out to a one score lead. It's 13-12. Just able to get a hand on that one, deflecting Antonio Feliciano. That one popped up in the air. We'll see what the Highlanders can do with this one. The soft touch over the net. Thornton sets up slight, setting up Wardlow. And number 23 comes away with another kill. He now has nine kills right behind Hickman and the Lopes have themselves a two point cushion. It's 14-12 as NJIT is gonna take a timeout. So and now both teams going back and forth, not really being able to build any sort of momentum offensively. GCU does have the advantage though, 14 to 12 as NJIT sending it over with the hard kill there to come away with the point. It's 14-13. And Tyler, it'll be interesting to see if any team can really pull away in this set as they have gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. No offense really has been able to get anything going. No, absolutely. And, but not the teams offensively, but individually with Feliciano and Hickman on both sides. They've been, they're stars for the offense, but it's like when the Lopes score, the Highlanders score, the Highlanders score, the Lopes score, there's never been any runs really in this set. Well, the Highlanders just scored, now the Lopes just scored. Jackson Hickman coming away with another kill, set up nicely there, able to find the inside part of the court. So now with a 15-13 lead, it'll be Wardlow back to serve for the Lopes. NJIT looking to send it over. Going in for the hard kill as it's blocked by the Lopes. NJIT able to keep it in the air, but GCU is gonna be awarded with the block as Cameron Thorne coming away with the block, and the Lopes now have themselves a three-point lead at 16-13. Looks like Williams is pleading to the ref. That should have been Highlander's point. Nonetheless, looks like Rico Wardlow gonna be back to serve for the Lopes. Up by three, an opportunity here with their largest lead of this set, believe it or not, to come away with potential momentum. But just when you think that they have the opportunity, there's a service error dished out and NJIT has the point. Now they have an opportunity to creep closer once again at 16-14. Carson Williams, eight kills, 10 attempts. Third in the leaderboards for this NJIT offense so far here today. Service error for service error, and the Lopes now have themselves their three-point cushion back. It's 17-14. Both serves for 
both teams are just coming off very flat, not getting above the net. Slight gonna send it over for the Lopes. Highlanders just looking to get anything going here as that one will find the court. A vicious kill right there from Williams, and it's 17-15. Jordan Lucas, can't really ask for more from him defensively, just unable to get a good hand on that one for the Lopes. Is Slight gonna set up Camden Gianni, who is looking for the kill. Nice defense there from NJIT. That one was kept up in the air long enough for them to deflect it, as Thornton's gonna get it over the net, but it's gonna hit the top of the net, and NJIT is gonna come away with the point, and they creep closer once again at 17-16, Lopes. Great hustle there by Thornton, but couldn't get the accuracy on the save and point for the Highlanders. Only down one now. Williams sends it over. Slight setting up Gianni. Does he come away with the point? He doesn't. As that one was lasered out of bounds and we're all knotted up at 17. Camden Gianni looking to lead by example as that one does not hit one Highlander player on the left side as the red and white now have an opportunity to regain the lead. Remember, they were up 2-0 early on here in set number three. But a service error once again shoots themselves in the foot, and Grand Canyon has themselves the lead back. It's 18-17. Jackson Hickman now back to serve for the Lopes. Thirty-two combined kills for the Lopes. Thirty-nine combined kills thus far for NJIT, looking for their fortieth, and they're going to come away with the point. We're all knotted up at eighteen. Slight once again looking to set up. Jared Anderson, who comes away with the kill. And the Lopes regain the lead. It's 19-18 as Anderson gets in on the fun for the first time here on this Saturday. So now it'll be Jackson Herr back to serve for the Lopes. Just barely gets it over the net. And NJIT once again going to nod things up. 19-19 as these offenses continue to go back and forth and back and forth. No team able to run away with it in each of the last two sets after NJIT got out to a sizable lead in set number one and never really looked back. Greg back to serve. Thornton to slight to Wardlow. Didn't really time that one up too well as that one's going to find the court and NJIT regains the lead. So after a hard fought battle here in the latter stages of this set, NJIT finally regains their lead. It's 20 to 19. And another service error does not allow them to add to that one point lead. We're all knotted up at 20. So both defenses performing splendidly in this third set. The offense is going back and forth, haven't really been able to build on each other's momentum, but the service errors have killed both teams on both sides so far here in set number three. Slight sets up Hickman, it's blocked, and NJIT back out in front, it's 21-20, as New Jersey's defense steps up once again. Take another look, Hickman with the two-on-one coverage against him, perfectly blocked right there that almost hit the net. And it looks like they're gonna give the point to the Lopes. So it looked like NJIT, Nagri, and it looked like Feliciano. Let me take a quick look at my notes. It looked like it was both Nagri and Feliciano going over the net there for the block. So a net violation for NJIT. And Grand Canyon back out in front, it's 21-20. Now the Lopes have the points in their favor with four points to go from a set victory here in set number three. Anderson to Slight to Hickman. 
nothing you can do there against Jackson Hickman. He picks up his 14th kill. And a timeout is called for the Highlanders as their team is three points away from going down. Attack violations as well. So it's, again, the self-inflicted wounds that was part of my three keys earlier at the top of the show. So they need to buckle up and fight for this last set. Jared Anderson sends it over the net for the Lopes. NJIT looking to mount a comeback here. And they're off to a nice start as Antonio Feliciano picks up kill number 11. It's 22-21 with NJIT in a prime position here to knot up the game at 22 apiece. Griffin Fiesler. Sends it over the net. Slight setting up Anderson. Anderson had those 18 points a weekend ago in Honolulu. 14 kills against Lewis as that one is hit out of bounds by NJIT and GCU now up by two again. It's 23-21 as they creep a little bit closer. Again, they had a 25-22 set number two victory. They're two points away from coming away with another hard fought victory going into set number four. Would definitely ease the tension heading into set number four if they're able to come away with a victory. They're unable to keep that one in the air though as NJIT continuing to make this a game late. It's 23-22. Feliciano back to serve for NJIT. It sounds like a broken record, but something's gotta give here Late in this one, folks. Hickman is gonna come away with the kill as that one's gonna find NJIT's bench. Kill number 16 as he is in firm control of the kills thus far today for Coach Worley's squad. And then it'll be match point, 24-22 Lopes with Rico Wardlow back to serve. Lopes one point away from going up two to one here on this Saturday. And a service error is not gonna allow it to happen as NJIT has another opportunity. It's 24-23. Yeah, this is the Highlanders' chance now to get back into it. They were gifted a service error from the Lopes. Let's see if they can capitalize here to keep this set alive. Carson Williams trying to keep it alive for New Jersey. Gets it over the net. Slight to Wardlow and NJIT is able to keep it alive. As Anderson to Slight to Hickman, none other than Jackson Hickman sealing the deal here in set number three. He's got 17 kills for the Lopes as the purple and white, though it wasn't their prettiest set. They come away with a... Keeping the same lineup Jared Anderson is in. As he gets over the net, beautiful dig there from Lucas. As he sets up Hickman, can't score there. Fiesler all the way to Greg. Gets it to Thornton, and it's like a net violation on the Lopes, so that will be a point for the Highlanders. Fiesler set to serve here. One point lead for the Highlanders. High serve, and a little too strong there as another service error for the Highlanders, and we are knotted at one. Slight set to serve, gets it over the net. Fiesler to Greg, and Greg with a beautiful kill right there. See the replay here, Fiesler with a beautiful pass and a perfect setup for Greg. And it is now 2-1 Highlanders. And this is the perfect example of NJIT service errors really shooting themselves in the foot. You take away that service error, there could be up by as many as three points right now. Exactly. Slight to Hickman, great play, back to Slight. Thornton setting up Hickman again, this time he capitalizes with a soft touch. His 18th kill on the day, creeping to that career high he got in the Aloha State against UC Irvine. Yeah, it was a nice mix and match offensively last night for the Lopes. You saw a little of Cameron Thorne, a little of Camden Gianni, a little of Rico Wardlow, a little of Jackson Hickman. 
But Jackson Hickman running away with the total tonight, looking for as many as 20 plus kills on the afternoon. Absolutely, and as you saw, Carson Williams getting it on the front there with the kill. Gives the lead back to the Highlanders, three to two and early in set number four. As he is set to serve, just gets it over the net. Slight setting up Jordan Lucas with the absolute killer of a kill. And then we are now dotted up at three. Well, we talked about the energy, the adversity as well that he's had to deal with in this game all the way back in set number two, if you can remember. Much needed right there if you're number 22 for the Lopes. Oh, yeah. Greg trying to get the kill, couldn't do it. Hickman's to slight. Back to Hickman! Right off the body of Feliciano, but he gets it back. Thorne back to slight. To Hickman again. Feliciano right there to Fiesler. And a score for Alessandro. See the replay there, Fiesler right to Alessandro Negri as he gets the kill there. Greg set to serve. Jordan Lucas getting down on the hardwood. Jared Anderson a little too much on there, which would be a kill error. And now it is five to three Highlanders. And Jared had the right idea. We'll take another look here. A wide open hole in that back corner on the court. Three on one coverage coming from NJIT. Just put a little too much on it, like you said, Tyler. Yep. Speaking of putting a little too much on it, Josh Gregg with the service error as the trumpets of the GCU pep band letting him know it. Jared Anderson set to serve. And now back-to-back -back service errors for both teams as the serve will now go back to the Highlanders and the lead is six to four. And now we're seeing some of the same common mistakes on both sides as we enter set number four. I want to try to hear these trumpets as least as I possibly can. <laughs> Absolutely. In this set. Alessandro Negri gets it over. Jared Anderson again. And this time, unlike last time, he missed that spot. He got it just right. And he scores for the Lopes. Cuts the lead to one down. I mean, that's what you talk about. Learning from your mistakes. Just able to chop that one up in the back corner. Picture, perf picture perfect placement right there, too. Lucas with a beautiful dig. Slight to Anderson. And he scores again. Back-to-back -back points for Jared Anderson. All set up, though, by that Jordan Lucas dig. And Jared Anderson, we mentioned those 18 points in Hawaii last weekend. It's why he's in this lineup right now for Coach Worley late in this game. Again, both teams going back and forth early, but Jordan Lucas looking to set the tone here for the Lopes. Try to do something that neither offense has been able to do all night long, and that's gain a little bit of momentum. Absolutely. Looks like Fiesler getting the towel, rubbing off some sweat off the court, make sure we don't have any injuries or slippages. Lucas set to serve for the Lopes. Sends it over. Fiesler to Greg. And Lucas almost able to get to it. Kind of an awkward following, making sure he's okay. And the Highlanders scoring. Let's see that again. Greg, great kill. Just close. Lucas flying high in the sky. Gotta love the effort he gives every single play. Andrew Fidmasu set to serve now for the Highlanders. Rocket of a serve. Slight setting up Hickman. Can't capitalize there. Fiesler trying to do it, but he couldn't. Miscommunication and mistiming there from the Highlanders. And we are knotted at seven. Just didn't time it well, went right into the net. Fortunate for the Lopes, he couldn't get his hand on that one. Wardwell set to serve now for the Lopes. Just got it over the net. Fiesler to Greg, and could have get it slight with a great play. Hickman capitalizes, another kill for Hickman. The Lopes putting their bodies on the line here, constantly hitting the hardwood. And you saw the three on one coverage, Los Angeles. 
NJIT is heading back home to New Jersey as they look to continue their hot play at home. Again, six and two at home. One and six so far on the road, looking to avoid their seventh loss here on the road in the desert. Has not been too kind to them thus far, despite really playing some of their best volleyball that we've seen. They'll take on Princeton on Saturday in Newark. A little too much there from Feliciano. Out of bounds, and there'll be a point for the Lopes, not at eight here. And like we've been talking about all game, haven't really been able to see a run yet. Just back and forth action for both teams. Slight sends it over. Fiesler to Greg. Slight right there. Thornton to Hickman. Couldn't get there. Greg, perfect placement. Thorn on the attack and scores for the Lopes. GCU jumping ahead now by one. Fiesler to Williams. Great one-two punch there for the Highlanders, and now we are knotted at nine. His 10th kill of the day for Williams. Feliciano now set to serve. And that was way too much power there from Feliciano. Another service error as the trumpets sound for the Highlanders. And the Lopes now back in front. Oh, D9 right at the net. Jared Anderson says no. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. Right off of his left hand, right off the left palm it looked like of Jared Anderson coming away with the block. Yeah, he got completely vertical on that one. And this time, Alessandro Negri gets it back with a kill of his own. And now they're only down by one. Yeah, that Highlighters. one was not as clean. Didn't really time that one up as well as that one right off of his right tricep it looked like. Yeah. And another service error for the Highlanders. Carson Williams couldn't really get it inbounds there. And you gotta love it if you're the Lopes. Cameron Thorne now set to serve. To Greg, and it looks like he couldn't get the placement there. It's gonna be a point for the Lopes. It was out of bounds, and it's now a three point lead for the Lopes. And let's see if they can build off that and turn it into a little run here. Thorne just sends it over. Fiesler right to Fed Masu with the kill. Two point lead now for the Lopes. Greg set to serve. And another way too strong of a serve. Another service error for the Highlanders. And like we saw yesterday, Jack, it is building now for the Highlanders in these service errors. Those trumpets are going to be in the nightmares of these Highlanders players <laughs> this weekend. The way, And they've come at the worst times, Tyler, as well. And then the Lopes have done a great job at combating some of those service errors, like right there. Absolutely, as Hickman again, just a beast on the offensive end. The four point lead here, halfway through set number four as Jarrett Anderson set to serve for the Lopes. And blocked at the net. Jordan Lucas along with Wardlow there. And now the lead is up to five for the Lopes as they're slowly starting to pull away here. Yeah, I don't want to jinx them, Tyler, but they're starting to build a little bit of, you know, that M word that we've been talking <laughs> about all game. The sizable lead, but just like that NJIT creeping closer. And it looks like he just jinxed them, Jack. Now the lead cut to four for the Lopes. Alessandro Negri set to serve. 
Way too strong there from Negri, and now the lead back to five. It looks like there's a timeout of this weekend in Newark with the Lopes trying to you know, pick up on some of that sloppiness before they head to Concordia and Irvine next weekend. Absolutely, just a little bit of uncharacteristic play from the Lopes. You usually don't see sloppiness and miscommunication as we've been seeing from the number four team in the country. Yeah, and like I was saying last night as well, Tyler, it seems like it's been a completely different team since Hawaii. They were running roughshod over everybody the first few months of the season, just three nothing sweep after three nothing sweep, a few three one victories you could put in there just like last night. But ever since last weekend, the Lopes have had a tough time with some of these matchups in the last two weekends. Absolutely. Slight to Anderson and a little too strong there from Jared Anderson. Lead is now four for the Lopes, 17-13. See if the Highlanders can capitalize on some of the Lopes mistakes here. Beautiful dig there from Jordan Lucas and Jared Anderson. Can't capitalize. Great defensive play there. Slight right there gets it back. Oh, beautiful play by Thornton. And Hickman could have capitalized. Beautiful play by Fiesler and Williams right at the net. And a couple points now back to back for the Highlanders. Fenmasus to serve. Right to Thornton. Slight to Wardlow. Powerful kill right there from Wardlow, and the lead is now four. Wardlow set to serve here. Lopes just seven points away now from winning this game. He gets it to Williams. Beasler back to Greg. Jared Anderson in a perfect position. Back to Hickman. Another kill for Hickman, that is now 20 on the day. It is now a five point lead for the Lopes. A little too much there, service error, and it'll be a point for the Highlanders. Well, the Lopes are comfortable right here with a four point lead despite that service error, but you gotta take advantage of some of these leads late in this game, trying to end it right here. You don't wanna force a set number five, but NJIT still got a hill to climb. Thornton, nice dig. Slight with a little trickery there. Lucas running all the way cross court, sets up Anderson, and he gets it. It was hit out of bounds, but it was a tip at the net. It is now back to a lead of five for the Lopes. 20 to 15, five points away now from taking this set and ultimately taking the victory away from the Highlanders. Williams to Thorne, Thorne to Lucas, back to Anderson, blocked. Thorne to Hickman. And it'll be another kill for Hickman. Luciano tried to run over there, but too much on the Lopes side. 21 kills now for Jackson Hickman. Having himself a day. Luciano could have capitalized there. Thornton back to Hickman. Fiesler running it down. Back to Greg, blocked at the net. Williams to Fiesler, back to Feliciano. Anderson gets a hand on it. Lucas keeps it alive. And another kill for Hickman. One kill away now from tying his career high and kills.
Slight sends it over. Fiesler to Greg, and Greg finds the perfect spot on the court and gets a point, a much needed point for the Highlanders. Yeah, it looked like Matthew Thornton was moving to his left right there as we'll take another look. Perfectly placed if you're Greg as he finds the middle of the court. Highlanders need a miracle here if they want to stay alive. Feliciano to Thornton. To Thorne! That was a great play by Thornton, keeping that ball alive, and Thornton had an easy opportunity for the kill. Yeah, that one split right between Feliciano and Greg there, as you see both of them fall to their feet, perfectly placed. Hickman to serve, Fiesler to Greg, and denied at the net. Jordan Lucas with the block and a little bit of a selly from him. Fans on their feet at Global Credit Unit Arena awaiting the final point. Fiesler. Slate keeps it alive momentarily, but not for long as the Highlanders get a point there. And keeping the game alive for the moment. And just like how it has been the past two games, they end the game on a service error. The Lopes take the victory here, winning sets three to one, 25-17 in the last set. A beautiful game from... Listen up, 
Let me paint a picture clear About the ones who shape our minds year after year They stand tall in the classroom Guiding our way Molding young minds Every single day From math to literature They light the spark Igniting curiosity Leaving their mark With patience and passion They lead the pack Empowering the future Never looking back they're the educators, the mentors, the guides In the journey of knowledge They're the trusted allies with wisdom and care They paved the way for the leaders of tomorrow Come what may In the halls of learning they're the cornerstone, building bridges of knowledge, never alone With dedication and love, they plant the seeds of wisdom and growth Fulfilling needs through ups and downs They're always there, with encouragement and belief, they show they care In the classrooms embrace, dreams take flight As they inspire greatness, day and night they're the educators, the mentors, the guides In the journey of knowledge, they're the trusted allies with wisdom and care They paved the way for the leaders of tomorrow, come what may So here's to the teachers the unsung heroes, whose impact reaches far and near, like steady flows. In the symphony of education, they play a part, shaping minds and souls, igniting the heart. <laughs>